welcome everyone to lecture number 10 on nonlinear dynamical systems we will continue with the bendixson criteria and the poincare bendixson criteria in particular we will see important examples one is the lotka voltera predator prey model and also the van der pol oscillator let us start with the lotka voltera predator prey model this is studying how the population of two species vary as a function of time these two species are classified into prey and hunter so there is one species that is a prey another species that is a hunter and we will study the model of this prey and hunter species so of course we are studying a simplified model let xh be the hunter specimen in the model and let xp be the prey specimen in the model so what does this equation say x dot is equal to x dot h equal to minus x of h plus some quantity that depends on both xh and xp and x dot p equal to xp minus xh xp so the first term in each equation is how the particular species would evolve if there were no other species yeah so the first system first equation says that if there were no prey that is if xp were equal to 0 then xh would just decrease as a function of time it would decrease exponentially because there is no food yeah. so left to itself the hunter species would just decrease but for each interaction between xh and xp the hunter eats the prey and hence this extra in this extra the next term the second term in this right hand side is causing an increase in the hunter population so the hunter population decreases because of its own population and it increases because of its interaction with xp so the in, the rate of increase is proportional to both xp and xh population so it is bilinear in the two it is equal to the product the, that is the increasing increase causing term on the other hand the prey itself is just going to multiply it's going to increase exponentially when left to itself if there had been no hunter species and interaction with the hunter species causes xp to decrease so quantities xh and xp are all positive and whether the increase or decrease depends on its own population and also population of the other species so this is a reasonable model for how dynamics of two species that interact with each other evolves as a function of time of course we have simplified most importantly in the sense that more generally there would be some constants x dot h would be equal to minus a times xh plus b times xh xp and x dot p is equal to c times xp the rate of increase is proportional to some c times xp in general and the decrease the interaction causes a decrease with this multiplication with d so this is how one could study a general model but one can consider that we are choosing a different unit for xh and xp so that these constant become equal to 1 also there is some normalization that has been done so that we are studying this model so of course this itself is a simplification this model is also a simplification because there might be some higher order derivatives we have seen already how the population of just one species can vary with resource availability with the ability to reproduce depending on the interaction between species all that has been ignored we have assumed this first order dynamics with respect to itself and just the product the interaction is just the product of the two species population so the question that we can ask for this particular model is what are the equilibrium points what is the nature of the equilibrium point of the linearized system are there periodic orbits these are the questions that we will ask so let us go back to this particular model and we will find the equilibrium points for this system so d by dt of xh and xp is equal to minus xh plus xp times xh and this is xp minus xp times xh yeah so this is our f so equilibrium points 
points are those values of x h and x x p where f one of x h comma x p equal to zero and also f two of x h comma x p equal to zero. So what do we get by equating x h minus x h plus x p x h equal to zero and x p minus x p x h equal to zero? For a particular value of x h and x p to be an equilibrium point, these two equations have to be satisfied. So let us see what are the values for which these equations are satisfied. First equation says x h equal to zero or x p equal to one. Second equation says x p equal to zero or x h equal to one. So this gives us how many pairs of equilibrium point? The equilibrium point has an x p and x h coordinate. So let us see what all possibilities are there for equilibrium point. So if both equations have to be satisfied, then one can have zero comma zero. Yeah, so this is nothing but x p equal to zero and x h equal to zero. So the first component in this is x h species value. Second is the x p population value. So both equal to zero is one equilibrium point. That is what we get from here, and both equal to one, one comma one. Yeah, so which which means x h equal to one and x p equal to one. This is another value for the equilibrium point. You see, notice that other th this if x h is equal to zero. You cannot have x p equal to one. Why? Because for the other, uh, for both equations, this is equation one and this is equation two. Yeah, this is one, is two. Equation one says that any one of these two possibilities. Equation two says any one of these two possibilities. And when we combine them, we get that these two equilibrium points, these two points, these two values of x p and x h, are. Situations where the population species does not change as a function of time. So this is where x h, this is x p. So one equilibrium point is here, another equilibrium point is here. This is the uh, equilibrium point one comma one. This is equilibrium point zero comma zero. As I said, the first component denotes x h value. Let let us see what happens if x P is always equal to zero. X P equal to zero means this is a hunter population. Yeah. So our dynamical equation system says that if X P is equal to zero, which means that the second term is always equal to zero, and if you put X P equal to zero here, then X H is just decreasing. That is how we have drawn these arrows. And if X H were equal to zero, so this is sitting on the X P axis. Then x p just goes on increasing. This is how the arrows look, but more generally, it is a combination of the two. So, for example, let us take what happens at 0.5, 0.5. Let us draw the arrow at this particular point, which corresponds to point 0.5 and 0.5. So, at x h equal to half and x p equal to half, we get x dot h equal to So this is just substituting 0.5 in place of these two. So we get minus 0.5 plus 0.25, which is equal to minus 0.25. And x p dot is just 0.5 minus 0.25, which is equal to 0.25. So this is the vector. Whose x h component is negative, but x p component is positive. So this is an arrow that looks like this. So that its x h component, the horizontal component is x h, it is decreasing, but x p component is increasing. So like this, we can draw arrows for all the points. One can check that this is how we get. Yeah, let me draw a bigger figure. Only the first quadrant. Is reasonable because the populations don't become negative. So this is a point one comma one. This is zero comma zero. 
as I said, XH population is going to decrease if XP is equal to 0. XP equal to 0 corresponds to this XH axis and XP axis corresponds to XH equal to 0. So, I am sorry. So, XH, XP, when left to itself, the prey population is going to increase. That is why the arrows should all be in the direction of increasing XP. So, the correct figure should be And this is a point 1 comma 1 and we already checked that at intermediate points at this point it is like this well, one, if it is a little higher let us verify this that this is how it looks so uh, this itself is an equilibrium point if it happens to be at the point 1 comma 1 if the hunter population is equal to 1 unit and the prey population is also equal to 1 unit, then it remains constant. But for small perturbations about that point, the arrows I have drawn like this, but this requires verification. So, let us take a sample point. This particular point has XP coordinate equal to 1, but XH coordinate slightly more than 1. So, for example, let us think of consider the point XH comma XP equal to 1.1 comma 1 yeah let us see what happens for this particular point for this particular point we have drawn the arrow like this but let us check whether it indeed is like this so uh, x h dot x p dot equal to we are evaluating at the point x h comma x p equal to 1.1 and 1 so, this is minus 1.1 plus 1 times 1.1. So, this is equal to 1.1. And XP population, the rate of change of the prey population is equal to 1 minus 1 into 1.1. Yeah. So, so, this turns out to be equal to X H dot x p dot is equal to the top component is 0 and lower value is minus 0 0.1 this is what happens when x h is slightly more than 1 slightly more than equilibrium point but x p is equal to the equilibrium point value that is equal to 1 so when we do this then we are speaking of this point here for this point we are getting that x h rate of change is equal to 0. So, the horizontal component is equal to 0 and the vertical component is equal to minus 0 0.1. That is why it is vertically downwards. Yeah. So, similarly one can check for each of these four points. What is the property of this point? It is XP population. The prey population is slightly more than 1, but XH population, the hunter population is equal to 1. For each of these four points, one can verify and see that the arrows are indeed like this suggesting that there is a periodic orbit around this point. So, there are periodic orbits close to this, but this point on the other hand looks like a saddle point. So, let us verify this by linearizing the system at each of these two equilibrium points. So, let us go back to uh, the dynamical system. So, x h dot x p dot minus x h plus x p x h x p minus x p x h. So, del f by del x. So, this is equal to f 1 of x, f 2 of x equals this. So, the first row, the first function here is called as f 1 of x, the second function here is f 2 of x. Del f by del x is equal to a 2 by 2 matrix. The entry here is derivative of this with respect to x h that is equal to minus 1 plus x p. The entry here is derivative of this with respect to the second component of x that is x p. So, this is equal to x h. 
the entry that comes here is derivative of f2 with respect to xh here we get minus x p and the entry that comes here is the derivative of this with respect to x p the second component of the state for that we get 1 minus x h yeah so as expected this is a matrix this is a 2 by 2 matrix which depends on x p and x h so we are going to evaluate this matrix at the equilibrium point so del f by del x evaluated at the equilibrium point 0 comma 0 this is one of the equilibrium points and for this particular equilibrium point we get minus 1 0 0 1 and del f by del x evaluated at the other equilibrium point 1 comma 1 we get equal to by putting x p and x h both equal to 1 we get 0 1 minus 1 0 so we have these two a matrices one a matrix for the equilibrium point 0 comma 0 and the other a matrix for the equilibrium point 1 comma 1 so it is not difficult to see the eigenvalues of these two matrices. So, equilibrium point 0 comma 0 has eigenvalues for a diagonal matrix. The eigenvalues are nothing but the diagonal entries. The equilibrium point 0 comma 0 has eigenvalues 1 and minus 1. So, we already saw that this is an example of a saddle point. and the equilibrium point 1 comma 1 has eigenvalues what are the eigenvalues of the matrix of which matrix of this matrix eigenvalues of this matrix are plus minus j as we noted in one of the first few lectures that the eigenvalue of such a matrix if beta is not equal to 0 then the eigenvalue of this matrix are equal to alpha plus minus j beta yeah the eigenvalues of such a matrix are complex precisely what complex values are the eigenvalues alpha alpha plus minus j beta the diagonal entries are the real elements real part and the off diagonal entries with opposite signs correspond to the imaginary part of the eigenvalue so these are the eigenvalues even when beta is equal to 0 so for this particular equilibrium point equilibrium point we have this special case and so the eigenvalues are plus minus j which we know corresponds to a center yeah the equilibrium point is what we called a center so a center is one that has periodic orbits and we already saw that for this particular plot indeed this particular equilibrium point equilibrium point has periodic orbits and this is a saddle point so the linearized system is a center which is nothing but a continuum of periodic orbits very close by different initial conditions correspond to different periodic orbits they all correspond to periodic orbits and different periodic orbits is that the same for the nonlinear system also this is the topic that we will see in detail today so please note that we have investigated the lotka volterra predator prey model for convenience the predator we have called as hunter so that we can use a subscript h and the prey we continue to call p x p the simplified model shows two equilibrium points one equilibrium point the linearized system is a saddle point and the other equilibrium point of the lotka volterra predator prey model corresponding to 1 comma 1 corresponds to a center after linearizing so what is important is that this particular equilibrium point is a center we already saw that these arrows are suggesting like this if it were a linear system then when we go close this is a periodic orbit when we go close to this and another initial condition it may or may not be a periodic may or may not be a different periodic orbit the linearized system says so but it need not mean for the original nonlinear system also 
For example, if these are two different initial conditions, they correspond to the same periodic orbit, but different initial conditions like this may correspond to different periodic orbits or might converge to the same periodic orbit. This is a subject that we will see in detail today. So, if all these initial conditions correspond to different periodic orbits, then we will like to say that there is a continuum, continuum of periodic orbits. These periodic orbits are not isolated, but very close to each periodic orbit, there is another periodic orbit in a very close vicinity. Suppose this is a periodic orbit, the, the initial conditions starting from here correspond to periodic orbits also. In that sense, there is a continuum of periodic orbits. So, it is a very well known important uh, fact that for the particular lotka volterra model that we have taken for, let us go back here, for this particular lotka volterra predator prey model for constants A, B, C, D, we have two equilibrium points 0, 0 and 1, 1 when you assume A, B, C, D equal to 1, but for a different point when a, b, c, d are some positive constants possibly not equal to 1, there are two equilibrium points. While the 0, 0 is a saddle point, the other equilibrium point is a center and moreover for the non-linear system for this lotka volterra predator pre model, there is a continuum of periodic orbits. This particular fact for this particular model, for any of these two models is a very important fact and one can modify this model suitably so that we have isolated periodic orbits. So, today we are going to see a different example where there are indeed isolated periodic orbits. So, let us use Poincare Bendixson criteria and the Bendixson criteria to check if there are periodic orbits. Let us see the Bendixson criteria. What does this Bendixson criteria say? We will evaluate this particular quantity and check whether it's whether this is identically equal to 0 or not. If it is not identically equal to 0, only then we can go ahead and apply the Bendixson criteria. So, let us evaluate this particular quantity for our example. For our example, F1 of x was equal to minus xh plus xp times xh and f2 of x is equal to xp minus xp times xh. So, this f2 we could also call as fp and this is equal to fh. fh denotes the rate of change of xh and fp denotes the rate of change of xp. So, let us evaluate del fh by del xh plus del fp by del x p. When we evaluate this, we get derivative of this with respect to x h is equal to minus 1 plus x p plus derivative of this with respect to x p, we get this equal to 1 minus x h. So, this is equal to x p minus x h. So, is this identically equal to 0? No, it is not identically equal to 0. Yeah? So, it is that is why we can go ahead and apply the Bendixson criteria. Let us now apply it and see x p minus x h sign of this quantity. If the sign does not change over a region, the Bendixson criteria says that if the sign of this particular quantity does not change on a region, then there are no periodic orbits contained inside that region. So, when is xp xp minus xh equal to 0? It is along this line. So, everywhere to the right of this line, this, this is xh, this is xp. To the right of this line, this quantity is negative and above this line or to the left of this line, this quantity is positive. So, the Bendixson criteria says that there cannot be a periodic orbit contained to the right of this line, nor can there be a periodic orbit 
to the top of this line it does not so this is equilibrium point 1 comma 1 the Bendixson criteria does not rule out such a periodic orbit that does not lie entirely in this region nor does it lie entirely in this region. Yeah. So, this is an important property to note that the Bendixson criteria only says that can such a periodic orbit exist inside this region? No, this is not possible. Can a periodic orbit lie entirely in this region where the sign of this is all positive? That is also not possible. However, this particular Bendix periodic orbit could exist. So, Bendixson criteria is only a sufficient condition for non-existence of a periodic orbit lying entirely inside a region. Let us now check what the Bendixson criteria says for a linear system x dot is equal to A x for which the equilibrium point is 0 comma 0. Yeah? So, Bendixson criteria is applicable when for the planar case that is when x has two components at each time instant x of t has two components x 1 and x 2. So, suppose a was equal to yeah, may, uh, maybe we see a slide about this. So, for the Lutka Volterra predator prey model we have already seen this before we see another example let us see this particular case periodic orbit for a a that looks that is of this form. So, our A we have already assumed in the it is of this form and we have now we will do del f 1 by del x 1 plus del f 2 by del x 2. Notice that these two terms are nothing but the diagonal entries of this matrix A. So, for this particular A the diagonal entries are both 0. So, they add up to 0 also. So, they are identically equal to 0 no matter which x 1 x 2 you check this is going to be equal to 0. This particular quantity is expected to be independent of x 1 x 2 for linear systems. Why for linear systems for linear time invariant systems these 4 entries are all independent of x and hence you differentiate f 1 and f 2 f 1 with respect to x 1 f 2 with respect to x 2 which is nothing but just picking up these entries picking the values at these 2 positions and they are going to be independent of x. So, for this particular A we get this identically equal to 0. So, do we say that Bendixson criteria is not applicable or do we say that there are no periodic orbits? Of course, we know that for this particular A the eigenvalues of A are equal to plus minus square root of 2 times A. So, if A is positive then the eigenvalues are plus minus 2 times minus of 2 times A. Uh, we, we will just verify this. So, what is S i minus A? S i minus A is equal to so determinant of S i minus A is equal to S square plus 2 A. So, eigenvalues eigenvalues of the A matrix are nothing but roots of the determinant. The so, roots are square root of minus 2 A plus minus. So, if A is positive A greater than 0 then complex purely imaginary in fact. If the eigenvalues are purely imaginary then we know for a linear system there are periodic orbits and if A is less than 0 then eigenvalues are plus are, are real, real one of them is greater than 0 other is less than 0. Why? Because this if A is negative this quantity itself under the square root sign is positive. So, we can take the square root and one is positive one is negative. So, for this case the eigenvalues are here and for this case the eigenvalues are here and here. How far from the origin depends on the value of A of course, but whether they are depending on whether A is positive or negative affects whether the roots are purely imaginary or real. So, we know that for this case the equilibrium point is a center and there are periodic orbits while for this case 
the equilibrium point is a saddle and there are no periodic orbits. So, the important case when this is identically equal to 0, that particular case could correspond to either there are periodic orbits or there are no periodic orbits. This is just to see that the Bendixson criteria is unable to say anything when this is identically equal to 0. That is precisely the reason that Bendixson criteria assumed that this is not identically equal to 0 and then you start looking at whether the sign changes or not. So, let us take a case where for x dot is equal to a x, let us check what, what is del f 1 by del x 1 plus del f 2 by del x 2. What is the value of this? We will check that this is equal to 4 by calculation explicitly. So, x dot is equal to a x means 2 x 1 plus 3 x 2 that is the meaning of a acting on x and the second row of a will be used to multiply with x to get minus 3 x 1 plus 2 x 2. So, when we do this then we differentiate the first component of x dot with respect to x 1 and we get this equal to 2. We are picking up just this entry and the second component of x dot that is f 2 of x with respect to x 2 we are doing this. So, notice that the derivative of this with respect to x 1 is just this component this first 1 by 1 entry and the derivative of this with respect to x 2 is just this entry that is the reason that I said that doing this particular to evaluate this quantity is nothing but to add the diagonal entries for a linear system for a linear time invariant system. So, we get this equal to 4 this is greater than 0 and it is independent of x 1 x 2 for linear systems we expect that this will not depend on x 1 x 2 and it is in indeed independent of x 1 x 2. Since it is greater than 0 for all x 1 x 2 we get that no periodic orbits no periodic orbits in R 2 in the entire state space in the entire plane there are no periodic orbits. So, for linear systems we can check that as long as the diagonal entries do not add up to 0, yeah, as long as the diagonal entries do not add up to 0, this quantity will not be identically 0 and then we, we, we can see that periodic orbits are ruled out. When would periodic orbits be possible if the diagonal entries add up to 0? If the diagonal entries add up to 0, we cannot say that the periodic orbits exist because the Bendixson criteria is silent for that case it does not say anything when the diagonal entries add up to 0 identically. We already saw that it is possible that there are periodic orbits, it is also possible that periodic orbits do not exist when the diagonal entries add up to 0. So, this is already the complication for linear systems. So, for the lotka volterra predator prey model to show that there are periodic orbits is a difficult thing and uh, it is an important research uh, topic after which it has been concluded that there, are con there is a continuum of periodic orbits for the particular model that we studied. Now, let us take some other examples of dynamical system and check whether there are periodic orbits or not. So, consider this example. So, in which x 1 dot equal to x 2 plus x 1 times x 2 square, x 2 dot is equal to minus x 2 plus x 2 times x 1 square. So, we differentiate the first in order to use Bendixson criteria this particular quantity that we were to evaluate is nothing but divergence of f. Yeah? Divergence of f is also denoted as dot product of this operator with f. So, when we evaluate this we get x 2 square here and so there is something wrong here this x 2 should have been x 1. So, please note that there is a small mistake here if we have x 1 here then we get this. So, now we have that this is always positive yeah, after you substitute x 1 here you get that this is always positive. So, if the Lotka volt this is very similar to the Lotka Voltaire operator prey model after we have x 1 here this is very similar to the Lotka Voltaire operator prey model if it had depended on not just the product of x 1 x 2, but some higher order power of one of the species then it is 
possible to show that the Bendixson criteria says that there are no periodic orbits. Why? Because the divergence of f is always positive except at the equilibrium point. So, hence by Bendixson criteria there are no periodic orbits. Now, consider this example. Th this example also has we should have a modification here. We should have x 1 here in place of in the second equation x 2 dot equal to minus x 2 minus x 2 times x 1 square. So, here we see that this changes sign. This only means that inside the region where it has the same sign there there is no periodic orbit contained inside that region. This is an example that we have already seen. Now, we will study an important case where we have an epsilon here yeah, along the diagonal entries. Yeah. So, for this particular A in which we have epsilon along the diagonal, what can we say about the equilibrium point? So, when epsilon is greater than 0, then the equilibrium point 0, 0 is unstable focus. This is something that we have already seen. What happens when epsilon is less than 0? When epsilon is less than 0, the eigenvalues of this matrix are epsilon plus minus 2j. So, epsilon greater than 0 implies unstable. Unstable node or focus, it is unstable focus because the imaginary part is non-zero and for epsilon less than 0, we have a stable focus. So, this is what we will say that as a if this epsilon, this is our epsilon value and this is let us say radius distance of the point from the origin. So, if epsilon is some positive quantity, the epsilon itself is not dependent on x 1, x 2. Yeah. So, it is just the same positive number, positive means unstable focus and if it is some same fixed negative number, then it is stable. So, this is unstable and this is a stable focus. So, how about modifying this epsilon as a function of radius? So, that we have trajectories that converge to a periodic orbit. So, this is what we will see in detail. So, what if epsilon changes its sign depends on the distance from the origin and changes its sign. So, consider this differential equation in which along the diagonal we have put 25 minus x 1 square minus x 2 square along the diagonal and the off diagonal term we keep constant does not depend with uh, change with radius. So, this is nothing but writing it in this form in which along the diagonal we have some function that depends on the radius depends on the distance from the origin. Now, we consider the case when r is equal to 5 for that case we have this epsilon of r is equal to 0. We can consider the case when r is less than 5 for r less than 5 the diagonal entries are positive and when r is greater than 5, the diagonal entries are negative, are both negative. We cannot speak of eigenvalues of this, the eigenvalues of this matrix itself depends on x 1, x 2. We speak of eigenvalues of only constant matrices. So, it appears like if we make this radius, if we uh, make this diagonal entry depend on radius, then we will have trajectories either coming towards the origin or going away from the origin depending on whether we are inside a particular circle, whether we are inside the circle of radius 5 or outside and on the circle itself we are going to be remaining on the circle. So, let us check. is the circle of radius 5. So, when when x 1 is equal to 0, so this is radius 5 circle. Okay. So, uh, when x 1 is equal to 0 and x 2 is equal to 5, the time x 1 dot so, x 1 equal to 0 sorry the, the, the orientations we start again. So, 
how do we get this orientation we expect that for uh, radius equal to 5 equal to 5 we have a periodic orbit why is it that we have a periodic orbit you put r equal to 5 and you see that the matrix a the it looks just as if so so check check that x1 of t x2 of t equal to 5 times so along a circle x1 x2 are like cos and sin of a function of what frequency t of just cos t and sin t why because omega is equal to 1 for this particular a the solutions are x1 x2 are equal to cos and sin to the sin of the quantities and of radius 5 and why cos t sin t in general it would have been cos omega t sin omega t and then omega is equal to 1 because of diagonal entries are equal to 1 now we are going to decide why is it clockwise and not anticlockwise that we can check by taking some sample points so consider this point this is x1 component equal to 0 and x2 equal to 5 so consider the point 0 comma 5 at 0 comma 5 when this acts on 0 comma 5 when a acts on this matrix then we get that this is equal to 5 comma 0 so the x1 component is increasing at this particular point that is why it is along this direction yeah so by using the same argument we can decide where cos of t should come where sin of t should come and whether there should be a negative sign to one of these now the focus of this particular topic is to see what happens for radius larger than 5 for radius larger than 5 and for radius smaller than 5 so for radius larger than 5 there is the off diagonal terms indeed cause some uh, rotation but the diagonal entries cause a decrease in the radius that is why it is coming inwards yeah. so we have these arrows coming inwards and for the circles inside the circle of radius 5 that is for circles of radius less than 5 there is some rotation causing caused because of the off diagonal terms but the diagonal entries themselves are positive which is causing this radius to grow as a function of time this is an important property that we will uh, exploit to say that all initial conditions except the equilibrium point 0 comma 0 are all converging to this special periodic orbit which periodic orbit the periodic orbit of radius equal to 5 so let us check let us use Poincare Bendixson criteria and check that there indeed exists a periodic orbit we are not able to say that this is a center kind of arguments because we can use that only for a linear system by linearizing at an equilibrium point so uh, take take m to be equal to the set set of all all x1 comma x2 such that x1 square plus x2 square lies in the interval 4 to 6 closed interval so what is our set m let me write again set m is a set of all x1 comma x2 points such that x1 square plus x2 square is less than or equal to 6 and x1 square plus x2 square is greater than or equal to 4 in other words this is a circle supposed to be a circle this is another circle this is a circle of radius 4 this is a circle of radius 6 all the points in this ring these are all the points whose distance from the origin is greater than or equal to 4 and less than or equal to 6 also yeah this and this so we will now check that this particular set m is positively invariant and has no equilibrium points inside it and it's compact the compactness is satisfied because it's a compact set and it's a closed set because these inequalities are non-strict inequalities they're not strict equalities but non-strict inequalities because of the fact this is a closed set and it is a bounded set 
because we see that all the points are at most distance 6 away from the origin hence it's a bounded set so in order to use poincare bendixson criteria we are going to check that this set m is a positively invariant set also so wh when would poincare bendixson criteria be applicable the set m should be a closed and bounded set should be positively invariant and there should be no equilibrium point inside it or at most one equilibrium point which is either an unstable node or an unstable focus so let us check what is the property of this particular m we show that m is positively invariant so how can we show that this set m is positively invariant so what we will do is we will take the circle of radius 6 and we will check that this circle of radius 6 the outward the the vector that is perpendicular to this boundary is outward like this this is a vector we will check what is the inner product of this vector with the vector field if at every point along the boundary this vector field is directed inwards it means that all the points are trajectories are coming inwards yeah what are these vectors this is a unit vector perpendicular to the boundary and directed outside the region the region is directed the region is inside this as far as the boundary 6 is concerned as far as this boundary of radius 6 circle of radius 6 is concerned this is a vector that is directed outwards so let us check whether what is this vector it is nothing but x1 x2 vector its inner product with f of x at that point f of x at each point is again a vector of dimension 2 we will check whether this inner product is positive or negative if this inner product is negative on circle of radius 6 it means that along this circle all trajectories are going inwards why is it inwards because this is a vector outward and this is the f of x if this particular angle is this dot product being negative means that the angle between the two vectors is an obtuse angle why because what is what is the dot product of w dot product with v this is equal to w norm times v norm times cos of the angle between w and v so if this quantity is negative it means these two quantities can't be negative so this cos theta is negative and cos theta is negative only for theta beyond 90 degrees which means that this angle between these two vectors is greater than 90 degrees and since this vector is a vector that is directed outside the boundary this angle being obtuse means the f is directed inwards so let us check whether this quantity is negative so um, x1 x2 times f of x so f of x is what we can see from this particular thing f1 of x is first row times x1 x2 so this is nothing but x1 times 25 minus x1 square minus x2 square plus x2 this is the this is f1 of x and f2 of x is minus x1 plus x2 times 25 minus x1 square minus x2 square so when we do the dot product of this that is nothing but this row vector times this column vector when we evaluate this let us see what we get so x1 square times 25 minus x1 square minus x2 square plus x1 x2 this is just this quantity here that I have written is just x1 times the first component here plus x2 times minus x1 plus x2 square times 25 minus x1 square minus x2 square so x1 x2 minus x1 x2 these both cancel so we get x1 square plus x2 square in common 25 minus x1 square minus x2 square now we go note that we are going to evaluate this along the circle of radius 6 
so we get 6 square times 25 minus 36 yeah so this is this is some quantity that is less than 0 that is all we needed so this proves that along the circle of radius 6 the arrow is directed inwards now let us check what happens along the inner circle this is a circle of radius 4 yeah and along this boundary this is a unit normal and the f itself so there are two vectors at each point along the boundary one vector is the direction of f of x at that point and another vector is the direction of the unit normal and in this case this vector says that it is directed inwards why because m lies to the outside of this region outside of this circle yes, m was the set of all points of radius greater than or equal to 4 and less than or equal to 6 since we are taking a circle of radius 4 the region is to the inside so this vector is directed inwards of the region so at each point what is this vector it is just x1 x2 again and the direction of f at that point is f1 x f2 of x now because this vector is a vector directed towards inside the region along the boundary this particular quantity being greater than 0 means that the angle is acute angle the angle between the two vectors is less than 90 degrees and then it would mean that the trajectories are all coming inwards into the region yeah so there are all these trajectories that are coming into the region as far as the boundary is concerned as far as which boundary is concerned the circle of radius 4 so by the same argument all we have to do is we have to now substitute x1 square plus x2 square is equal to 4 square and not 6 square and this quantity becomes 4 square when we are looking at the circle of radius 4 and this quantity becomes 25 minus 16 which is now positive so this is greater than 0 on circle of radius 4 so this proves that the set m is positively invariant how have we shown that this set is positively invariant we have said that this set m has boundary consisting of two circles so this is one boundary of uh, circle 4 the other boundary is circle of radius 6 and the region is like this this is the region m all along the outer circle the trajectories are coming inwards into the region this is what we checked because the angle was obtuse there all along the inner boundary also the trajectories are coming inwards yeah so check that as long as the region m is defined as set of all points where the radius of the where x1 square plus x2 square is greater than or equal to say 4.9 and less than or equal to 5.1 it will still be positively invariant that is the only property that we used so such an m will be positively invariant and hence it will contain a periodic orbit is there an equilibrium point inside this region that is another thing we are supposed to check before we use the Poincare Bendixson criteria this is the last thing we will check before today's lecture ends so let us put f1 of x equal to 0 and f2 of x equal to 0 so f1 of x we had evaluated and we had got that equal to so what is shown here is f1 of x and this is f2 of x we have to substitute both equal to 0 and find the values of x1 x2 such that both these functions are equal to 0 those x1 x2 values will comprise the equilibrium points so one can check that the only equilibrium point for this is x1 x2 equal to 0 comma 0 in other words if m is a set of all points of distance greater than or equal to 0 
if, if the radius is strictly greater than 0, then m will not have any equilibrium points. That is why we can, so, so th this implies that x1, comma x2 equal to 0, comma 0. x1, comma x2 equal to 0, comma 0 is the only, only equilibrium point. The equilibrium point itself is stable or unstable, one can check. Let this be as a homework that this equilibrium point is unstable. Why? Because uh, at this equilibrium point, we ensure that the diagonal entries of this particular matrix, of which matrix, let, let us go back to the slide, of this particular matrix for x1 equal to 0 and x2 equal to 0, this particular matrix has diagonal entries positive and hence the equilibrium point is an unstable focus. So, this allows us to use Poincare Bendixson criteria since the region that we have considered set of all points of radius greater than 4 and less than 6 greater than or equal to 4 and less than or equal to 6 is compact, is positively invariant and has no equilibrium points and hence there is a periodic orbit. By making this set m smaller, smaller and smaller such that it just contains the circle of radius 5. So, we can take the region of m to be set of all points of distance slightly less than 5 and slightly more than 5 and it will still the same argument will hold and there will be a periodic orbit. This shows that there is there is no continuum of periodic orbits here, there is an isolated periodic orbit for this particular example. We will consider modifying this example uh, and obtain the Van der Poel oscillator as a special case. Thank you.